This video talks through the difference and differences example in the book. So first some notation. We're interested in the outcome y, which is annual labor income. And we are interested particularly because our city recently implemented a large minimum wage increase and we're trying to learn about the effect of that on y. So we'll have two dummy variables again defined using the indicator function. So first we'll have x1 which in general is a dummy for being in the treated group and in our specific example this is an indicator for being somebody who lives in our city because our city was the one that hypothetically had this minimum wage increase. And then there's also x2, which is a dummy variable equal to 1 if we are in the time period after whatever treatment or policy was implemented, and equal to 0 if we are before. So that's the variables we're thinking of. And we can imagine thinking about the pairs of values that correspond to different cases. So if we have somebody who lives in our city and we observe them before the minimum wage increase, their x1 is equal to 1 because they're in our city, they're part of the group that will eventually be treated, uh, but their x2 is equal to 0 because we are not in the after period. But then Similarly, if we are in the after period, looking at someone in our city, we will get 1, 1. If instead we're looking at somebody in a different other city in the before time period, well, x1 will equal 0 because this person is not part of the treated group. They don't live in our city. And x2 is also equal to 0 because we are not in the after period. And then down here, finally, uh, again, x1 will be 0 because they're not in our city. But x2 does equal 1 because we're in the after period. So there's sort of these four possibilities where every individual is in one of these four groups. Now we can think about first some bad ways to use these groups to try to estimate the causal effect of the policy change, the minimum wage increase, on the outcome, annual labor uh, earnings. Sorry. Earning. So one bad approach would be to only use data from our city and just do a simple before-after comparison. So in other words, we could look at what was the average uh, earnings in the after period in our city minus what was the average earnings in the before period in our city. So the problem with that is there could be 
lots of other things going on that would affect our city's economy and thus people's labor earnings other than the one specific policy or treatment that we're interested in. For example, if there were a big recession, uh, then that would cause earnings to go down regardless of whether there's a minimum wage change or not. Or conversely, if there's a really good macroeconomic conditions, our city may benefit from that uh, separate from whatever effect the policy does or does not have. So that is one bad approach, is to only use our city and just do this before-after comparison. Another bad approach would be to only look at the after period and compare our city. So look at our city's mean earnings and subtract the other city's mean earnings. So the problem with that is there could be other characteristics of these cities that have an effect on earnings, again, separate from whatever uh, minimum wage change there was. So, for example, if one city is San Francisco, California, and the other is Columbus, Ohio, uh, there's very different industries and other uh, characteristics that make the wages in San Francisco much higher, regardless of whatever minimum wage the two cities pick. So that would be bad because we would be sort of lumping all these other differences that affect earnings, uh, lumping those together with the treatment or the policy we're actually interested in. So instead, the difference in differences does a more sophisticated um, approach where it uses all four of these values to try to estimate the causal effect where um, if you imagine this is time going this way so we have before and after and maybe our city does something like that this is our city mean or average earnings and then if there's the other city where they uh, maybe also go up by that amount, then what the difference in differences does is it makes this assumption, which is a strong assumption and is not always true, that if our city had not changed minimum wage, we would have had the same increase in earnings that the other city had. So this change here in the blue, so this is the other city, it's assuming that our city would have followed a parallel trend it's called the parallel trends assumption and ended up over here so that when we want to uh, estimate the effect of the policy we should only look at the difference between our observed outcome in red and then this counterfactual point down here that comes from taking our starting point in our city and then adding the trend that we estimate from the other city.